Welcome back, everybody, to Big Apple Hockey. We have a big show for you today. It was going to be bigger, but we had a guest cancel on us. But not a problem. But he'll, he'll, be, he'll, be, on, he'll be on uh, next week. It's still exciting news. Uh, in case if you're joining us right now, we will have Keith Jones on with us next week. So, uh, but of course, got to introduce the band, because that's the way we're always going to do it. <laughs> I'm, of course, your host, Mark Williams. I have to wait for my own nameplate. It feels a little bit awkward to do that. And I'm joined also by the one and only Mr. John Falkowski, the boys of Time Bomb. I mean, I guess I'm uh, Big Apple Hockey's residential uh, Time Bomb. Resident Time Bomb, if you will. <laughs> it's all for the ranted shirt. I mean, De I, I, Destination I, Unknown, Ruby, Ruby, Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho. And of course, the man with the connections, Mr. Anthony Larocco. Training camp's about two weeks away. Let's do this, boys. Hockey's almost back. Yeah, that's Love that's it. the real thing. The real notice about uh, just the next couple of weeks is just hockey is back. We don't. It's thank God, save us from all these other things. Embarrassing moments in baseball. Uh, Yankees are in a tailspin at the moment. Uh, the Mets. I don't need to say anymore. Goodness only knows about the Jets and the Giants. So, come on, hockey. Hockey, please save us. Uh, we're raffling off a hoodie today from Hattrick Apparel. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, this is them right over here. They got a, a ton of great stuff from NHL Fanware. So, just, you know, if you want to look good every single day. I mean, I always want to look good every single day. So, I I mean, I try to. Uh, so, let's get to the league news. Um, Yesberry... Kakaniemi. Did I get it right, John? Yes. Yes. Kakaniemi. <laughs> Kakaniemi. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens decline his offer sheet, and uh, then they turn around, they trade for Christian Dvorak from that. Um, and KK is officially a, a hurricane. Um, first, what are your thoughts, each one of you guys, about this? And there's a second question I have at the end of all this for you. John, we'll start with you. Situation's interesting. Um, I obviously did this as, uh, out of spite. Um, there's no doubt about that. I, I thought they personally should have waited for Caulfield, but maybe they never would have gotten the chance. Um, but you're, you're looking at a team that just poached a – yeah, I'm, I'm with that comment too. I, I need hockey. Like <laughs> yesterday. But um, – you, you, you just poached a team, uh, poached a player from a good young player from a team. He's got potential, but he hasn't really lived up to his draft status yet. So, Carolina overpays by quite a bit, six point one million. I don't think there's anybody in the world that'll tell you that he's worth that right now. Could he be worth that one day? Maybe. Could he put up big numbers in a top six, playing on a line with fellow Finns like Sebastian Aho and Tavo Taravainen? Yeah, he could. And then that six point one million, they're like, oh well, maybe we have to qualify, or maybe they don't qualify him and they sign him to a lesser deal, like I don't know, maybe somewhere between four to five million. So, yeah, he, um, it, it's it, it's a weird situation. It really is because I didn't think that this would actually happen, and here we are talking about a revenge offer sheet that was not matched, obviously. And then Montreal turns around and, in my opinion, kind of overpays for Dvorak. I like Christian Dvorak, but I wouldn't have given up any more than a second and a good prospect for Christian Dvorak. I wouldn't have given up a first-round pick, especially in this draft. So now Arizona is over here with, I think, three picks in the first round, and they're just they're sitting pretty right now. Montreal, they don't have a pick. in, or Actually, no, they have Carolina's pick, I believe. Or did Carolina's pick go for... Did Carolina? Whichever one, one is higher, one that's the one Arizona gets. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so then that that that's an interesting dynamic because Montreal looks like they could miss the playoffs. I mean, if 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 not, if everything doesn't go right for them, they could possibly miss. And Arizona is going to be a lottery team. So again, interesting dynamic there, but. Is this really worth it for Jesperi Kakaniemi? Was this really the target that they wanted? 
I, I just I have a lot of questions about this, and I don't know if it's necessarily the right person to target and what the end game actually is because Montreal, you kind of I don't know if you necessarily upgraded with Dvorak, maybe temporarily, but how high is Dvorak's ceiling? Do we do we, have we seen the best of Christian Dvorak, and have we and is there more to Esperi Kakaniemi? So I mean, both players with warts. I know. I, I think Montreal might have uh, might be stumbling over their own feet a little bit here. By the way, before we jump to Anthony, I got to show you this. Rich was saying how he toured with Rancid. So yeah, I saw that before. Awesome. I, I yeah. asked him. Yeah, yeah he uh, this comment here. Yeah, cool. that's, that's awesome, awesome actually. Too. That yeah, that's with cool. the Ramones. All right, to you, Anthony. Your thoughts on this uh, this weekend? Well, I kind of thought from the beginning. Um, you know, Phil said that I think everyone knew that Kakinami is not worth six point one million. Um, so that that right there told you that there was a strong chance that you know Montreal wasn't going to match this offer sheet. And the last bunch of offer sheets we saw throughout the years, the team has always matched. Um, so this one was was a real possibility that they weren't, and that's what Montreal ultimately decided to do. You know, they they I guess they determined that Kakinami at six point one wasn't worth it, and they can get a more cost effective player in Christian Dvorak uh, with some of the assets they got from the compensation. Um, the only thing with Kakinami is he still is, he still is only twenty one years old. Um, you know, as folks, I I still think he does have a higher ceiling than he the untapped potential that he could reach. And maybe playing with fellow Finns and Aho and Terabon and help them do that. But um, I honestly, I think I think it was the best move for Montreal because, like I said, it, it all comes down to numbers, and he wasn't worth the six point one million. Um, you know, and that now the question is though, is is Montreal a strong enough team to make the playoffs this year? Um, and in the division with with Toronto and, and Boston and Tampa Bay and you know the upstart Panthers. There is no guarantee that they are going to be a playoff team. I think with or without Kaki and Yemi. So, um, you know, ultimately, I think right move by Bergeron uh, to to not match and take the assets from from the Hurricanes. Because let's face it, Kaki and is not worth a first and a third at this point in his career. So, and then that, I'm going to interrupt. This comment is Montreal. perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I saw that on the Twitter handle. Yeah, I mean, listen. I um, I know we'll get we'll probably get to that later in the bar talk segment, but there, it was definitely a, a revenge factor there. But um, you know, as for the hockey side of it, I guess you know you got to believe the Hurricanes of face value. You know, there were reports they were trying to trade for Kaki Niemi, so obviously they do like the player. Um, I think they just saw this as a good opportunity to one exact revenge and you know force the Canadians' hand and get a player that they wanted. Um, that the Canadians were going to be unwilling to apparently trade him to. So um, overall, I mean, I, I, I guess, I mean, I guess you could say Carolina wins because they got the player they wanted, but um, long term, that's yet to be seen. Like, we'll find out this year what Kakinani brings to the table. But um, overall, though, it was good theatrics. It was good for the league. It was it was good banter, um, and it also gave us something to talk about. But um, you know, I, we'll we'll see how this develops now. But uh, like I said, I, I think Montreal made the right decision to not match, and the Hurricanes got the player that they ultimately wanted. So, I that. I can't help but look at this, uh, and I, I've tried looking at this, trying to think to myself: Is it really worth it for Carolina to sign uh, uh, KK to this offer sheet? When I mean, you, you figured Montreal could trade him for less uh, and and get back. Or you could trade for, with Montreal to get less, down a first and a third. Um, it, I kind of softened the blow. I talked to a friend of mine, huge Canadians, uh, can, uh, Hurricanes fan. I mean, that he was saying how now their center depth is unreal. They're talking about moving them to the wing, um, and I, their their forward depth is incredible in Carolina. I, I still I just don't know about this deal. Six point one million dollars. Now, granted. Uh, starting in January, uh, they can uh, renegotiate and to sign him to an extension, and you don't have to pay him six point one million dollars. But I'm uh, if if I'm KK, I'm going no. Pff, the hell with that. You're you're gonna pay me the money. I actually think this kid's gonna hold up. Uh, did you did you hear the comments that he made that it's that his development could have gone a little bit better in Montreal? 
Yeah, I, yeah, I saw that. I mean, that's, that's a I little mean, bit. He's not wrong. Well, it's a little bit telling, and because uh, the guy that I'm thinking about with this is Alex Galchenyuk. And that yeah, is there another yeah. is is he going to be Alex Galchenyuk 2.0 and maybe a change of scenery, um, work out and uh, that'll actually end up being, yeah I know I saw that one comment too. Uh, that, well, will change of scenery actually end up helping uh, KK and you know he's he's going to be with more finished players maybe that'll help but. Um, I don't. I, I. I just don't know about this deal. So I guess, guys, that brings me to the second part. So without further ado, who won this weekend? Out of the three teams, John. Three? Yeah, Arizona. Arizona's in oh, the yes, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Arizona. It just you, you, you end up you end up getting a, a first and a fourth for Christian Dvorak, which again I thought was an overpayment. I, I like Dvorak. Um, he's a good middle six center, I would say, right now. I wouldn't say he's a proven second-line center. I mean, his numbers at best are like 20-goal, 40-point numbers. I mean, is that good for a second-line center? Yeah, it's okay, but it's more like towards like the bottom end of second-line centers. You want your second-line center scoring like 50, 60 points somewhere in that range. And Dvorak's not that. I mean, could Dvorak do more with better line mates around him in Montreal? Sure, that, that, that's definitely a possibility. But Arizona now has, again, like I said, like three picks in first round. They have God knows how many second rounders. I, I think it's like five ooh. in this year's draft. Five? Yeah. So they, they could easily take two or three of those, move up into the first round if they want to, and get another first round pick in what's going to be a pretty good draft. So they're set. Carolina gets a good young player and overpays drastically for him. I don't. I, I mean, good, good for you, 2021 offer sheet champs. Well done, Anthony. You, you went out of your way to troll a team and overpaid a player drastically just so you can show off your social media prowess. Excellent job, Anthony. Uh, Let's not do that. You want to pay Alex Nedeljkovic. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead, Phil. You froze. That's why we thought you were done. But you wanted to pay Alex Nedeljkovic. Oh, okay. No, I didn't know that I froze. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to say, you didn't want to pay Alex Nedeljkovic $3, $3 million, and then you went and signed Anderson and Ranta to injury-prone and un an underwhelming goaltenders. I mean, and then you sign Tony D'Angelo after losing Dougie Hamilton and traded for Ethan Bear. I mean, their all season hasn't been good. So I don't know why they're going around and acting like they're like king of the hill or something. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go back to. And sorry, Ant, now I'm going to jump you. Uh, it's it's uh, how do you not pay Alex Zuckovic half a million dollars more? But you're going to overpay is very uh, Kak uh, Kakadiemi that he's you're going to that was the what they were going to do with that no that it doesn't it just doesn't compute you, the most important position is goaltender you had a runner up for rookie of the year i believe with a 9.21 save percentage uh you guys could correct me in the comments if i'm wrong right now i'm doing that off the top of my head um but it's it's, it's just what are you doing you they're probably going to have the same offer sheet for 5 million dollars and pay Nedeljkovic finally to you anthony yeah um I, I mean, I guess I guess you got to go Arizona. I mean, they, listen, they're not going to be a competitive team at all this year, but they got yet another first round pick. Um, actually, I think they got a they got a second round pick in the deal too. Um, it was a first and a second for Dvorak, if, uh, if I remember correctly. So, um, you know, they they got a haul for a player that you know clearly they were they were trying to sell off the whole off season. I mean, there were rumors that the Bruins were going heavy after him earlier this summer. So. Um, you know, credit to them. Um, yeah, I mean, I get the Canadians got a player that will definitely help them this year. Dvorak's no slouch. Um, and the Hurricanes, like, uh, like I said earlier, ultimately got the player they wanted. But, you know, long term and more realistically value wise, I think you got to say Arizona here. I think I think Arizona won running away because 
they got all the bullets in the gun and they're they're targeting a complete and total rebuild right now and it didn't not work only, in 2015 not only that but they're probably the favorites to get sheen right after this yeah i mean and, you can talk about what what Arizona. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, no, no, you were choppy. You're choppy, but we we got the. Can you hear us? This, yeah the in, the internet sucks here. I'm sorry. No, but, okay. um, well, it'll probably clear up in a little bit. So, um, just yeah. really quick around the round table, Montreal playoff team next year. Yes or no? Tilk. No. Okay. Anthony Weber's out. No, um, we're going in and out. Yeah, we got the no. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say no, but I'm, I'm real close to saying Boston, Boston misses and Montreal gets in in place of them. But I, I think it's going to be incredibly tough. I think the I, Metro send five teams. Yeah. I, I, I say no though. I, right now, Montreal, no. Yeah. And I'm going no as well. So, but also, what do you guys think? Who won this weekend? Was it Montreal? Was it uh, the Hurricanes? Or was it Arizona? Um, is there anything that we overlooked? Is Christian Dvorak really going to be the difference maker Montreal hope he's, hopes he's going to be? Is KK going to be the difference maker the Hurricanes hope he's going to be? Throw it all down in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.